and welcome back to another Nature Day, this time with Jay Foreman. Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, I never know how to do these things. Yeah. Should I introduce myself and say hello to you or to the slightly more people that are in the little box over well, there? Well, I know who you are, so I would suggest you introduce yourself to the slightly more people okay. in the box Okay, hi, uh, my name's Jay. And that pretty much sums up his channel. Uh, no, it, you do, oh, do like infrastructure and history and I that? do uh, very silly educational videos, mostly about geography, pot um, politics and cities and so on. Yeah, and it's very funny. Oh, thank you. Also, Tom Scott is here. Hi. Also, my mate Terry's here. Hi. And we have a 360 camera, because why not? We are here um, digging for fossils which is going to be an interesting day today because I don't actually know that much about digging for fossils. Oh, that's worrying because I don't know anything about fossils either. I was hoping that you would tell me. Well, here's a riddle for you. Oh, I get it. It's called a riddle. <laughs> hey. Oh, nice. It's just a garden sieve. Um, we are in Lesness Abbey, uh, which is supposedly a big fossil pit, like really easy to find fossils fossil pit. It, this place was a sea, a tropical warm sea in 55, 54.5 million years ago in the Eocene, in the Eprian era. Um, so basically you div, you dig. What you did you just call me? <laughs> you dig, you sieve, and you hopefully find some fossils. All of this area, but this particular bank, um, you can see it's sandy and there are little bits of shells in the soil. It just happens to be really good. And I'm guessing because it's sand and not clay, it's easier to dig in as well. All right then. So yeah, just dig. I, I genuinely don't really know what I'm doing. So you don't have any um, digging technique that you I can show me? I don't have any technique. I would say go down um, and there will be, 100% certainly, there will be shark's teeth. So at least that gives you an idea of what to look for. Well, how will I know the difference between a shark's tooth and a small stone that looks a bit like a shark's tooth? Because shark's teeth are unmistakable. Oh, I'm already doing something wrong. You're putting the earth inside your green thing yes. and I'm tossing it away. The idea being that you do that and so that all the gritty bit goes oh, away wow. and you're left with this stuff. I mean, the top few layers are probably just going to be soil and stones. There's a word I've got in my head. I don't know if it's the right one. Is it trepanning? Is that the word for when you put things in a thing like this and shake it out and no, gold comes out? No, that's panning. Yes. Trepanning is when you drill a hole into someone's skull. Oh yeah. To try and release the pressure. But that's a video for another time. What's the word Sorry, I jumped in as if I was part of this video then. Sorry. It's all right, Tom. I'm sure that everyone in the comments will be going, hey, get Tom on the camera more. So feel free to jump in at any point. So Jay. Hello. How often do you come into nature? Do you know I don't come into nature very often at all? Do I guess, not? well, because, um, well, two things. First yeah. of all, um, my video channel that I do yes. doesn't seem to touch on nature at all. It's all about man-made things, you know, human-built things, and I don't really get a chance to sort of dig things. Or... I mean, you sometimes go along, like, disused railways, don't you? And they're often quite good for nature. That's true, but what I normally do is I look to the camera and say, what a shame, the railway's gone and now it's replaced by nasty nature, and I leave. Other than shark's teeth, what are the other things we might find around here? Well, Jay, funny you should ask that. Uh, so, because it's an old sea, there are also turtle remains. Oh, wow. So you can see like the top shells, the carapace of turtles. There are um, bony fish, teleosts, and uh, bony fish like uh, wrasse or sturgeon or things like that have really weird mouth plates. They grind their food together. So it looks, I mean, it looks a bit like scales, but really hard and rocky. There were some mammal bones found here as well. Um, but shark's teeth is by far the most the most common one. And it's also the coolest thing. If you're oh, gonna... I don't know. If I could find a, tur a bit of a turtle from 55 million years ago, how cool would that be? This is satisfying, isn't it? You can get the aggression out. I mean, it's basically an adult's version of making mud pies and playing around in the dirt. Yeah, you don't stop doing this sort of thing because you grow up. You grow up because you stop doing this sort of thing. Ooh, oh, no, deep. hang on, no, that's the wrong way around. I meant to say it in the positive way, where this is fun and good and we should all keep doing it as grown-ups. So let's try that again. OK. You don't grow up because you stop doing this. You stop doing this bit. Oh, no, I said it the same again badly. I think you're doing it the right way. Is that the right way? I think it is. Right, let's try that again. OK. You don't grow up because you stop doing this. Oh, yeah? You stop doing this because you grow up. Oh, that's deep, Jay. Thank you. Jay Foreman, everybody. Oh, I thought I had something, but I think it's too small. Oh, no, wait. Oh, that's definitely a fossil. Is it? That's definitely a fossil. Oh. I found the first shark's tooth. 
Because I mean, you can also come over and get a shot from like a centimetre away. Okay. Do you want to hold on to that a sec? I'm going to get my information sheet that tells you what species of shark it is. So I've got a pot. Yay! I made a satisfying ding. It did. I know so much about fossils, I know how to print off an information sheet <laughs> I found online. Um, let's see what type of fossils this is. Because it's important to state that people don't have to be incredibly knowledgeable about the thing they're doing just to get out and about in nature. It so happens I know a lot about birds and insects and rock pools, but I don't know about fossils. I mean, it could be any of these. It, so there are three sand shark species that are likely to be found here. And there is only three extant species of sand shark now, meaning not extinct. Um, That's a word you don't hear very often, extant. Ah, you, you do in biology oh, you do. circles. Um, and one of them lives in the Mediterranean, among other places. Specifically one of them. Just, just, just one Terrible. very lonely shark. The one that it looks the most similar to I guess it's this one because it looks ever so slightly flatter, flatter on the bottom. Yeah. But that's... In which case it's a Stratolamia macrotta. Obviously. So have you got a good riddle? Have I got a good riddle? Have you got a good, any good riddles? Oh, I used to have loads. I feel like you're the sort of person that'll have a good riddle. Do I give off uh, riddle vibes? You do give off riddle vibes. I like the, a father and son are in a car accident and the father dies at the scene. The son is rushed into hospital and the surgeon says, I can't operate on this boy. He's my son. What? It's his mother. It's his mother. Yeah, it's, it's quite easy. <laughs> that yeah. is another option. I've had people think about it and go to the, it's obviously two dads before they think it's a mum. Which is both good and bad. Oh, hello. But it's not, is that, is that broken up? It's either a tooth or a toothy shaped piece of stone. Aha. Oh. I found a thing. In fact, maybe I found two things. You found a thing? I found two things at once. Wow. First thing I was going to show you was this little shell here. It is a bivalve. That sounds like a part of a car. Uh, so you've got your clams are in the bivalve, so two shells that are pretty much symmetrical that come together like that. It's one of them, because you can see it would join at that point there. I love that there's a name of a shellfish called the bittersweet cockle. Oh, nice. It's just, oh, you know. I want to have a go at reading the long roadrunner name underneath it. Yeah. The Glycemeris plumsteadinit, really? Plumsteadinitis is this. That's just what I was going to say. We're very near Plumstead, and there's the word oh. Plumstead right there. Well, the it, it, probably because it was discovered here. Then that's how a lot of fossils are named. Oh, it's a clam. Yeah. All right, should we stick it in the box? Yeah, don't and, climb up now. And the other thing I found straight away was I'm pretty sure it's a shark's tooth. That looks like a shark's tooth. Hey! Sharks constantly grow out new teeth, and so they're constantly having teeth falling out every now and again, rather than having them all go in one go. Um, and it means that they don't have to worry about their teeth becoming dull and blunt. So you've got new ones pushing through all the time. So if you see shark's gums like this, it's like a conveyor belt of teeth. Which you've got wow. to wonder, if they had the same teething pains that humans have, that would be agony. Imagine maybe that's why, they're, maybe that's why they're angry all maybe, the time. Maybe that is. And maybe they're not trying to bite people, they just want something to mouth against because of the teething pain, and it helps to have something to chew on. I've learned so much in the last few minutes. There we go. Oh, hello, hello. Oh. I think I just saw the flash of a quite big shark's tooth. Ooh. Aha! There we go. Shark, shark tooth number two. I mean, it's not as big as I thought when you said it was a big one. I think it was closer <laughs> to my eyes when I saw it. That's, oh, it's so much longer and thinner than the other ones. Is that the biggest we've found so far? It's the longest we've found so far. Ooh. And you can see striations on the tooth. I like how it changes colour as well towards the end. It's pinker. What I like about this is that it's like a, a decorative object that, you know, anyone would hang up on their wall. But yeah. no one's seen this in how many tens of years? So we found some stuff. We have found some stuff. And I think the score is an even three all for teeth. I think so. We, we found quite a lot. There is a miraculously appeared a handy bucket of water. Um, so we can rinse some of these things off. OK, so this is what we've got. And they're just so... Tooth-like. Yeah. I rather like this one. It looks like a map of Florida. I'll take your word. You're the map man. You see what I did there? Hold, yeah. This is the spotty one. That one's not only spotty, but it's got like a, um, it looks a bit damaged at the bottom. Yeah, you can, because it doesn't have the bony bit where it would fasten into the... <gasps> oh, look, it's hollow. Oh, wow. 
I was chatting to the guy that inspired Sam Neill's character in Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, all the Jurassic films, um, called Jack Horner, ironically enough. And um, they have so many T-Rex fossils and stuff. We lived in Montana, huge dinosaur fossil beds that they are happy to smash open some of them. They're not precious about their fossils that most other research places would be and managed to find soft tissue still inside the fossil. Oh, wow. Yeah, like super cool. It's making me want to snap this in half and see what's in there. I think it'll cleave here though. I don't think you'll be able to get into the tooth itself. I mean, you can try. So I snap it and see. Yeah. You can do it like a wishbone. You grab one half, I grab okay, the other. Okay. This will be extremely fiddly. Okay, I'm gonna go that way. Okay. Oh. That was easy. That was really easy. Who got the big bit? Oh, so it's not hollow, it's just... So if that's the bit where the gum is, then the tooth is shaped like that. So oh, it's... hence the Florida shape. The sort of angly cornery thing. Well, no, because the, the Florida shape is because just one end of it has broken off. So if you look at this tooth, you can see each tooth normally has a bit of where the gum is on either side and yours had a very long one, but one side had broken off, hence the Florida shape. I see. But instead of it, hey, this one, you can actually see the two little points. You know how on the pictures, some of them had these two little tiny points either side of the big point. Yes, now I do. Yeah, <laughs> this one has it. So this cool. is definitely a sand shark. See, that one reminds me somewhat of the Eiffel Tower. I think we've done pretty well there. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. Considering we didn't have a spade, we were only digging with trowels, and we were probably only digging for about an hour. We were digging with really only one and a half trowels. That is true. <laughs> That's enough teeth for what percentage of a single shark? Uh, maybe 10% of a small shark at a single point in time. So that's it. Thank you very much for joining us on this nature date with Jay, plus Tom and Terence. And thanks for inviting me along. That's quite all right. And see you on another one. I've thought of a riddle now, by okay. the way, all this time later. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm driving along in the car and yeah. my headlights aren't working yeah. and it's an unlit street. Yeah. And a man steps out in front of me, but he's wearing all black. Yeah. But somehow I know he's there and I stop the car. Yeah. How did I know he was there? Because it's daytime. It's daytime. Bye. Bye. <laughs>